welcome back to my series professional video production on a shoestring budget. Today I want to talk about the uh, NASA M version 2 software for your uh, Phantom, uh, your Phantom 1.1.1. This video is for beginners guys, beginners like me. I'm going to try to help you through and maybe give you a few pointers. Um, so of course the first thing you have to do is download the software. If you're a Windows user, you go to the DGI website, uh, downloads, uh, Products, downloads, and scroll down the page, and, and you'll find uh, you'll find the uh, version two, the NASM M version two software. That's what you're looking for. If you're a Windows user, don't forget to download the drivers. Do that first. It takes a couple of minutes, and then download the software. It's a small program. It doesn't take very long to download. Uh, it's pretty easy. If you're a Mac user, at their website, it says that the software will work on OS 10.6 and up. That's incorrect. Um, I'm running OS 10.75 and it wouldn't work. I, I uh, emailed DJI. They informed me that you needed Windows 10.9 and up. So for you Mac users out there, it's 10.9 and up. A um, little bit of confusion there from DJI. Okay, so let's hook up. Um, they recommend taking your props off whenever you're doing things like this um, on your Phantom. Take the props off first. Um, Plug in your Phantom to the USB connector. Turn on your controller. Got a beep there. And plug in, plug in your Phantom. So right away, as soon as you've plugged it in, you'll see the software will start, numbers will start popping around. It rec once it finds the Phantom, things will start happening. And uh, this page here, this is the, the view page, and it's got just kind of, it's kind of like a status page. Um, it's got a, some, you know, some basic information there for you. It tells you what some of the things that are on, some of the things that are off. Um, first thing I want to look at is, um, is the IMU calibration. There's been some debate about the IMU calibration. Um, there's user, users out there that say they've never done it and they've been just fine. The Phantom, you can fly it right out of the box. It has been calibrated at the factory. I've flown mine out of the box without doing any calibration. Um, but as I get deeper into some of the forums and the Facebook page, we've got a great Facebook page, guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, on Facebook, DGA uh, Phantom Facebook page. Uh, a lot of the more experienced pilots, they all recommend doing the IMU calibration. They say, why wouldn't you do it? Certainly, if you've crashed your Phantom, you're going to want to go in and do this. You're going to want to recalibrate your IMU. I've already done mine, but just a quick look at it here. You just click on check IMU status, and you're going to get a message that says no need to calibrate. You'll get that probably no matter what. Just ignore that and go ahead and calibrate it anyway. Like I said, I've done mine, so I'm not going to bother. Um, if you've crashed it and you've calibrated it and you're still having problems, you might want to try the advanced calibration. Uh, again, there's another bit of a glitch here. When you click on advanced calibration, it's going to tell you that your drone is overheating. It's just a glitch in the program. Just ignore that and go ahead and do the advanced calibration. That's going to take a few minutes. Don't touch the drone. Leave it flat and stable and don't touch it till it's through that uh, process. And that will take a few minutes to do the advanced calibration. Um, if you're still having problems flying your drone, um, you might want to try calibrating your radio controller and you'll find that under the basic settings and you just go over the RC tab, that's your radio controller. And <clears throat> just, I'm not going to go through all the details, it's pretty basic. You'll find videos on YouTube about how to, how to calibrate the radio controller. As far as I can tell, um, the radio controller calibration is just right here at the same page. You don't have to download separate software for that. Um, any, any, any views on or comments on that, guys, I'm happy to hear them. But if you're having trouble flying it, you might want to try your radio controller and uh, recalibrate that if you're still having problems. Um, something that you are going to have to do and that you're going to want to do uh, as a beginner flyer, um, you're going to want to download the software and you're going to want to turn on your IOC control. This is important, guys, especially for, for beginners. I'm going to do my next video. I'm going to cover 
what these features are, course lock and home lock. But to turn that on, to access those features, you have to download the software. You go, you go to the advanced portion, you go to the IOC, Intelligent Orientation Control, you go to the IC, IOC, and you select that tab, and now you can access these features. And in fact, if you go to your controller and click on the left-hand side controller, that's in, in your off position, click it down, and you've got course lock down again. Now you're accessing home lock, or you can have it off. Again, as a beginner pilot, you're going to want to use how to learn what these things are, what they do, and how to use them. I'm going to go over this in my next video. So that's important. And you have to download the software to access that, guys. So that's important. Um, okay, something else I might have, I, I probably, I probably should have covered as soon as, we, as, soon as I opened up the software, um, is the upgrade section. That's where you'd go, guys, you know, to check your firmware. And this came, just got this from the factory a few weeks ago. This is uh, July 1st, 2015. I just got this from the factory and everything's updated. So you shouldn't have to touch that. So, so a couple of other things um, that I've noticed here, guys. Under the advanced section in limits, it's got your range, your limit. And it, it's factory set at 2,000 meters height and 2,000 meters radius distance from the controller. That's over 6,000 feet. Um, that's like 60 football fields. That's a heck of a long way out there. If, if you've lost control that far out, in theory, the drone will bring itself back into your control zone so that you can regain control. You're a long ways out. You might lose battery power or, and, or a lot of other things could happen. I'm actually going to adjust those. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to adjust those a little bit and, and take my range down a little bit. But I just wanted to show you that. Um, something else uh, I wanted to show you in the basic tab, uh, in the basic section under aircraft, um, you've got a thing for motor test. Now I've got mine plugged in, so it's gone. It's gone to the uh, type of machine I've got, the quad, the quad drone. So you can see that the software supports nine different kinds of drones. And that's why this software is so complicated because it's, it's actually the software is used by, by very high end users, people that are building drones, people that are really into it and, and can make all the fine tuned adjustments. So you don't really need to adjust, you know, address yourself with all of those, you know, subtleties. Um, but one of the things you can do here is you can do a motor test and you run the motor test. And it's going to say, and sure, so you're just going to accept that. So then you get to motor, your motor test page. And what you can do there is test your individual motors. And looking down at the drone, you can check and see if they're rotating in the right direction, which is, which is a useful thing if you have a brand new drone and you want to check and make sure that, that all the motors were installed properly at the factory. So that's a good little feature to know, and it's kind of hidden. Like I said, this is pretty compli pump complicated software, and it's kind of hidden there. You really have to look for it. And another, uh, another bit of information you'll find in here, guys, under the uh, fail-safe settings is the information that it uh, uh, defaults to for uh, go home and landing in the fail-safe mode. And it just it kind of illustrates how fail-safe go home and landing works. 20 meters is, is the fail-safe height that the drone will go to, either vertically up or down. When it hits 20 meters, it'll hover in that position for about 30 seconds, and then it will directly fly at 20 meters until it gets over top of your home point. Again, it hovers there for about 30 seconds before it comes down and lands at the, uh, the home point that it registered when you uh, first turn it on and it does its GPS lock into the six satellites. But that's kind of a good illustration of how it works. That's another feature that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. I actually cover that in my first video on the, uh, the Phantom. Um, <clears throat> in the first video I did on the Phantom in my introduction. Uh, you'll, you're going to want to understand that. If you haven't watched that video, you should check it out. But like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of information here that I don't think you really need to, like as a beginner, you don't really need to uh, concern yourself. Yeah. Um, 
but there's a few things there that are useful. So, so download the software, um, do some research, go on some of the forums and, and see what people are saying about the IMU calibration. Uh, certainly if you crash, you're going to want to recalibrate your IMU and if you're solving problems, you know, you might want to recalibrate your controller. But in order to access the IOC functions on the controller, you have to download the software to enable those features. And as a beginner pilot, you're going to want to do that and you're going to want to learn how to use those features. And I'm going to cover that in my next video. I'm going to do a real brief video on, on home lock and course lock. So I hope that's cleared a few things up, folks. I hope, it, I, I hope it's helped. Um, I've, done a, I've, I've done a few videos on the Phantom. Check out my, um, I've got some links up here. Check out my series on professional video production. I've got tips about video production, all kinds of stuff. Subscribe to me on the, on the tab down in the bottom corner over here. I'm actually getting close to 1,000 a a thousand subscribers, so um, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. That, that might help me get over the top, and I can access some other YouTube uh, partnership features, which uh, will help me make a bit of money off the channel. Um, my channel is very eclectic. There's a lot of other stuff there, so check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.